So let's start with Force, Mr. Positive. What does he have to say about Pellworld? Hey, uh, fair warning. Not sure I'm going to be able to keep it together for this one. Yeah, okay, so here's the story. Nintendo just filed a patent infringement lawsuit in Japan mm -hmm. against PAL World developer Pocket Pair. They released a public statement announcing this suit on Wednesday, which said, Nintendo, together with the Pokemon Company, filed a patent infringement lawsuit in the Tokyo District Court against Pocket Pair on September 18th, 2024. This lawsuit seeks an injunction against infringement and compensation for damages on the grounds that... So, I've, I've read through all of the shit. I haven't seen any videos on it, but I have read through all of the shit and how, um, you know, vicious this is. This word here, compensation, is the important one. This is what they're looking for, right? They are willing to settle out of court for a percentage of their profit. That percentage being 99% of all their profits, right? The, this injunction, what they're doing here is, uh, I've explained this before, what they're doing here is lock them up in a legal system, keep them fucking locked up as hard as possible, and then fuck them into the dirt. Now, what's really, really concerning about this is if anyone has ever been to Japan or understands the Japanese legal system, they understand that the Japanese legal system doesn't like losing, right? If they lose, they see it as like a failure on their honor. So now a Japanese company, Nintendo, is going up against Pocket Pair. And what that means is that in Japan specifically, as far as I'm aware, their fair use shit is all fucked up. And there's no such thing as you can just use someone like inspiration from someone else's stuff, even if it's not a direct copy. So in Japan, there's actually a chance, as fucked up as it is, that Nintendo wins this. There's actually a chance of that, which is why they're doing this. And it's why they know they can get away with doing a really, really shit patent that doesn't make sense. Lock them up in the legal system as much as possible. Hold them down and fuck them for fuck them till the coins fall out their ass. That's how this works. How World, a game developed and released by the defendant, infringes multiple patent rights. Nintendo will continue to take necessary actions against any infringements of its intellectual property rights, including the Nintendo brand itself, to protect the intellectual properties it has worked hard for to establish over the years. So the first thing to make clear here is that Nintendo is suing specifically for patent infringement and not copyright infringement. What that means is that they aren't suing Pal World because, let's say, the Pal World creatures look awfully similar to Pokemon creatures. So that's the important part, is they know they can't lock these people up in litigation over a copyright infringement that a judge is going to look at and be like, it's dissimilar enough, get the fuck out of here. But the patents behind it, they can make sure that takes forever. And yes, it is scummy. That's, that's the entire idea, is be as big a piece of shit as possible. You might remember when Pal World first got popular, this was a big point of discussion, with many people even theorizing that some pals were directly ripping Pokemon models and then being slightly altered for their game. Now, even if we think that's true, that isn't what this lawsuit is about. And trust me, if Nintendo could sue for that, they- You know what I've never heard? You know, you know everyone's accusing Pal World of saying, you ripped Pokemon models. No one's ever shown me where they ripped the models from. I can understand if they took an overlay and rebuilt a model from scratch and it was their own work. And that still might not be okay. But no one has shown me proof that they ripped a model directly out of one of the Nintendo games. I've still not seen anyone say a statement on where that came from. And maybe they have and I just don't know where it is. Maybe someone's able to like find the OBJ file or whatever the fuck and copy paste it across. The proof appeared on Twitter. Yeah, okay, Relantis, what, what you're saying, the proof there, I know exactly what you're talking about. Those were pictures. Those were pictures next to each other. There was no... Oh, hey, this .obj file appears in the Pal World stuff, not obgyn. That's, that's a different kind of file. That's people who want to fuck gyne doctors. Um, I'm talking about like um, object files, like your 3D model. 
uh, it might not be o OBJ. I'm just using OBJ as a catch-all term for the different kinds of uh, model generations that could have been done in some CAD software out there. I've never seen a, hey, this file matches up with this file. If you look at the, the start dates, the editing dates, the manipulation dates, the uh, animation rigging, the pixelation things, I've never seen any of that. They would, absolutely. If they had even the tiniest shred of evidence the pocket pair stole and ripped off Pokemon character models, they would sue them into oblivion. And you know what? That would be reasonable. You can't steal code or directly rip someone's assets for your own IP. I so mean that's what they did, but I've never seen proof that they ripped the asset. And even if they did, show me the game they ripped the assets from. I've never seen proof of that. Maybe there is proof of that. Don't see it. And you can do that, but you can't do it without expecting consequences. But again, that's not what's happening here. Looking fairly similar isn't enough, which is exactly why Nintendo hasn't sued for copyright infringement. No, they are suing for infringements on patents related to Pokemon. Or in other words, they're suing because they believe there are mechanics, systems, or features from Pokemon games that Nintendo has patented and claim ownership of that are similar to the ones being used in Power World. Now at this point, you might be asking yourself, can you patent game mechanics? and systems yes. yes yes you can shadow of mordor nemesis system we've already spoken about this the nemesis system could have been in so many games and made them so much better guess what it's never gonna be it's like uh, it's a shit in the fucking ocean you're gonna see it once and never again it's about as stupid as it sounds. It is one of the most frustrating things to me in this industry because you will get these games with really cool ideas or features, hats off to the people who make them, but then no one else can use them for 20 years, all thanks to patents. It yep. stifles creativity, it stifles the evolution of genres, and legitimately holds back game development. It just makes gaming as a whole worse. We get yes. worse games because of these patents, or we don't get games that are as good as they could be. Without question, we have seen less don't worry about that Ashura. you can paint in my head um what i'll do to prevent it from being on stream is um tomorrow when you wake up you may find that your legs have been spread wide open and i'm hiding my bald head in in, the, in there um so that i don't walk around infringing on your patent just to make it fair you know because that way your patent is with you all the time and uh, no one can get rid of it innovation and growth in games in in this hobby all due to patents here's a few examples some well-known things off the top of my mind not really i've written them down but okay so the first one that particularly pisses me off is warner brothers patent for the nemesis system from shadow go. of mordor if you don't this is the one that's gotten the most um attention up to this point right now and this is probably why nintendo thinks they can get away with this because of this right here 20 years would they even get any money out of the fucking lawsuit trap than making it's not about getting money out of it money is a bonus lloyd the idea is stifling any competition whatsoever it's making sure that you are as memorable as possible not because you made something better than everyone else but because you destroyed the soul out of anything that would have otherwise been better than you think about it this way right i'll give you a story in university, I had a girlfriend. Terrible person. Now, you would think that you would be happy when your friends do well after an exam, even if you didn't. Right? I was pretty fucking happy. If I saw one of my friends pass and I had to redo a subject, I was like, God damn, that's life. But I'm really glad he doesn't have to do it again. Good for him. Maybe he can help me. The girl I was dating. If someone else passed. I noticed. That her behavior towards them. Would change. To the point that she would attempt. To damage their emotional state. So they did worse the next time around. And so by comparison. She would look better. That's the Nintendo strategy. That's happening right here. The Nemesis system is what made people like it so much. Yes, it is, Ashura. And guess what? The Nemesis system is a starting point. It's something that could have been so much better than what it is now.
but there's no development or innovation occurring with it because guess what? Fuck you, wait 20 years. No, in that game, you would regularly come in conflict with these unique named enemies over and over again. So you would fight someone with the name, I don't know, Gorthar the Destroyer. And then whatever the outcome of the fight, whether you won, whether you lost, whether you ran away, eventually later on in the game, you could bump into them again. And in that next encounter, Gorthar would remember what happened and comment on what occurred, saying something like, hey, you're going to run away from me again? And then on top of that, though, they would have the best one was the best part of this game was acting like a fucking psychopath where you find an orc and you shame him and you shame him and you shame him and you keep doing it over and over again until one like eventually you'll stumble across him and he's just like a jittering mess and he's like he's had to deal with so much anxiety that he can't even fucking speak anymore <laughs> it's the funniest shit and it makes me understand exactly why all the the politicians and the <laughs> these fucking like high up rich people do this to regular people because they think it's entertaining as fuck <laughs> because it is when you don't care about the thing that's happening <laughs> thought the best part was goth mommy shelob mm, don't remind me mm. yeah the darkness i'll invade the darkness Evolve, getting stronger or weaker, climbing up in the ranks, or being demoted, all based on what occurred in your previous fight with them. And this would keep happening over and over and over again, getting more layers, deeper interaction and history between the characters, and then these nemesis creatures fighting other characters, and then getting stuff based on that. It was just a super cool system, a lot of fun to engage with, and it added a whole heck of a lot of drama and personality to what would otherwise- So you found this boring, Yogi. I don't blame you. I only played the first one. I didn't bother with the second one. But I had fun with the first one. I think the first few hours were pretty boring. It was too expansive. I needed more, like, idea of what the fuck was going on. Just be fighting forgettable mini-bosses or yep. elites in many other games. This nemesis system was so awesome. Myself and a lot of people really, really liked it. He's right. If they removed the nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor, it would have been a shit game. Wait a minute, the orcs are fighting each other. The orcs, even, are fighting each other and you can make them sort of do that. Sounds like Pokemon. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Huh? Maybe Nintendo needs to sue these guys, too. Because you can capture orcs and turn them to your side and say, Go, Shalablub, go kill your friends, yay! <laughs> Maybe Nintendo needs to come after them. However, it hasn't been used in any other game franchise since. Not because it wasn't good, but because Warner Brothers had patented it. So unless they happen to make another game that uses the Nemesis system, which they have not beyond the Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor games, we are not gonna see any other game that has it until their patent runs out in 2035. Yes, we've got another 11 years of wait. <laughs> Over a decade away before anyone else can use it. Holy shit. Also, Ilgi, if you're going to sleep, good night. Thank you for sitting through the schizophrenic stream that makes no sense. <laughs> Holy shit. Waiting. Actually, I don't even know if a game can start development using that system until after the patent runs out. So in which case, we might be waiting until 2040 before we see another game that has a Nemesis-like system. Thanks a lot, Warner Brothers. Really appreciate it. And what is so frustrating about this, like I said, is that it really stifles growth and innovation in gaming. Because it yes, does. the Nemesis system was amazing. Like, hats off to the Shadow of Mordor developer, Monolith. They made a phenomenal system that really elevated the open world experience. It just made it so much more interesting coming across these difficult encounters these nemesis and how did you catch that where did this guy pause the visuals of this game did you catch that big brain big brain Edit and knew what he was doing. Us, these difficult encounters, these nemesis, and having these layers and depth and history and backstory just be. Also, orcs now confirmed as British.
based on what you did with them in the game. It was so cool. But now it's been 10 years since the initial release of Shadow of Mordor. And in an alternate timeline, we could have had many other games using even better, more evolved and improved versions of that system. In fact, I'll, I'll just say it plainly. Many open world games would have been better without question if they could have implemented some variation of the Nemesis system. But they didn't because in this timeline, in reality, thanks to Warner Bros. patent, it hasn't and it will not happen for at least another 11 years. Now, I will add a note here. Uh, with patents like this, we could technically see other games use these things, but in actuality, it never happens because if another game developer wanted to have something like that in their game, they would have to pay Warner Bros. a licensing fee, and that fee would likely cost a ton of money. So as a result, they just don't bother. And that's the thing. The result is we don't get to play any more games with yep. the Nemesis system until after 2035, or yep. if Warner Bros. eventually gets around to making more games with it. I think they have a Wonder Woman game that's supposedly... Harry Potter with the Nemesis system. Harry Potter, we, uh, it's basically Wizard GTA with the Nemesis system strapped on in an open world where there's no procedural generation. Man, I could just shit ideas for money. I can't wait until Wizard World comes out and it's GTA Harry Potter. And Warner Bros. launches the same bullshit at Wizard World <laughs> that Nintendo's launching at Pal World. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, open World itself absolutely blew, at least for me. I was already deep in Assassin's Creed UBI. Uh, open World fatigue. Yeah, no, I don't even remember the Open World of Shadow of um, Mordor. I literally only remember the Nemesis system. I don't even remember the story. I just remember there was a white guy inside of you. Um, and you could slap orcs, uh, you could pump slap them to mark them, and you could turn them to your side, or you could make them look like a bitch in front of all their friends. And it was really fun doing that, and so I kind of ignored the entire story of the game. Also because it's it's Lord of the Rings fan fiction, so I don't respect it. And um, all I did was run around um, <laughs> emotionally abusing orcs non-stop. <laughs> I would understand patenting it for long running a series, but uh, they never use it again. Yeah, because it's not about making it for consecutive games, Fielder. It's about making it and making sure no one else can use it. It's about being as stingy as possible. Going to be implementing it, I believe, if, if I'm recalling correctly. We've only had two in the past decade, and we could have had a whole lot more. And if you haven't played the game, you might not fully understand, but this is, a, I think, a perfect example of a patent stifling the industry. Yep. Open world games, having the inclusion of Nemesis systems would add a lot more to so many games that are out there right now. Oh my god, Breath of the Wild with the Nemesis system? Fucking Elden Ring. Imagine Elden Ring. With the fucking nemesis system. Anyone who's played Dark Souls 2 knows that it's probably one of the sloppiest Dark Souls games. But the Punisher was in Dark Souls 2. Now imagine you had one of those motherfuckers in Elden Ring with the nemesis stra system strapped to him. You would never feel safe out in the world. Never. You'd be fucking looking behind you wherever you went. That would have been awesome. Now, and that one's really personal to me for that reason, because I played Shadow of Mordor and was blown away by the system when I first encountered it. And at the time I thought, wow, this is a great mechanic. Open world games are going to be so much better and evolving and improving on this in the future. But nope, that's not what happened. Uh, there's plenty of other patents that I feel have held back gaming as well. Another good example is the Bandai Namco patent on loading screen mini games. So for a lot of gears, loading screens were a pretty big issue, something we had to deal with, especially back in the 90s. You would often have these oh, games yeah, with loading Screens that took a oh no, that was my game when I was a kid. Right, that right there, Crash Bandicoot was the shit. Full minute or even multiple minutes of waiting before you could get back to playing. For the most part, this just meant staring at a progress bar, maybe yep. getting some concept darts, some tips on the screen. Usually it meant going up to get a drink or go to the bathroom. But then in 1995, Bandai Namco, they had this great idea. What if they offered mini games that you could play while you waited for the main game to load? And that was pretty cool. They did this with their game Ridge Racer as well as Tekken 5. This was a good idea for about a week before it got annoying.
those are two most notable ones. Unfortunately though, they yes also patented this idea of what they called auxiliary games while waiting for the main game. In retrospective, this was the right thing for them to do is to patent this idea so we never have to deal with it again. And so we never saw it. Yes, it's malicious. Yes, they did it for all the wrong reasons. But if they didn't do this, we would probably be fucking stuck with loading screens to this day. But you know what? You know, you're not as a real big topic now. Why does this fucking modern ass game have so many goddamn loading screens? It doesn't seem like it's been programmed very well. Why am I running a system with a 4090 in it and I have to wait five minutes just to enter the next area? Oh, well, at least they made me play, play a mini game. Loading screen shit got better because we didn't have this blocking the way. Last thing I'd want is more resources being sidelined for a silly money game. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Shadow of Mordor is not amazing for plot, but a better story than Rings of Power. It is. But, again, Filter, I'm going to say this to you again. You keep saying these things. You're not saying anything. I, I could run a stream where all you see is my ass cheeks and me taking a dump on my table and then just turn off the camera and that's a better storyline than Rings of Power. I could... I could literally just point my camera at a wall. Eight hours of watching paint dry. And that's a better story than Rings of Power. I could dig up J.R.R. Tolkien's body and fuck it on camera and I would still be being more respectful to his memory than Rings of Power. If the bar was, if we were playing a game and the game was Limbo and the bar to clear was Rings of Power, the subterranean mole people are not even fucking clearing that bar. Again, this patent did happen to expire in 2015, but by that point, most games no longer had multi-minute loading screens, so there wasn't much use case for it any longer. But there was an entire 20-year period where it would have been awesome to have mini games in our nah, loading screens it. for many different games beyond ban People would have been mad about it, but fuck it. Good idea. Bandai Namco owned ones, but we didn't thanks to Bandai Namco's patent. Here's a few others quickly. Bioware had a patent of the dialogue wheel with the cardinal directions. This is the dumbest shit ever to patent. This one was dumb as shit to patent. But you know why they did it? Because someone else would have done it better. This is Bioware. Remember how M Mass Effect 1 and 2 were masterpiece? Remember how all your choices, every single choice you made between 1 and 2 and 3, when you got up to the, the final mission and you're standing on a ramp and you're choosing between three different colored laser beams, how everything you did up to that point didn't fucking matter at all. So what that means to me, if someone used this dialogue wheel shit, they would have done it better and by a way, would have been forgotten a lot faster of a wheel representing certain sentiments or regular responses. Sega's patent of the arrow over vehicle navigation system from Crazy Taxi, which Sega then used to sue Fox over as they yep. had a similar mechanic in the Simpsons driving game. Oh, yeah, Katamari arrows. has a patent for its whole- Fuck, I didn't know about that one. Stick, which is rolling an object around that picks up other objects in the environment, growing ever bigger in the process. If you wondered why we never saw more games like it, it's because of the patent. Say patented dung beetles. They fucking patented dung beetles. You think these guys like they like they're like fucking running around the Sahara Desert? They're seeing like bugs picking up shit and rolling it into balls, and they're like they're like slapping them with lawsuits. They literally patented an in life like an IRL mechanic and pass it off as a game mechanic. That's fucking genius.
patent. Bloober team had a patent for playing in two alternate versions of the same space simultaneously on a split screen, which is a mechanic they used in the game The Medium. And then Nintendo. Oh yeah, that schizophrenic game where you play where you play the crazy lady who's like seeing two things at once. Man, that was an awesome concept. Of course they patented it. Hey, guess why <laughs> our video games suck? I'm starting to see why they patented schizophrenia and dung beetles. Jesus Christ. No, also even had the sanity system patent all the way back for Eternal Darkness, although that one was evidently specific enough that many other games have released with similar systems, but not exactly the same. But back to Nintendo suing Pocket Pair. Okay, here's a neat trick, by the way for that I, that um, I learned when I was working as a systems engineer, project manager, and so on and so forth. When you're making a patent, you don't get hyper-specific. And I'll give you an example of this. This happened to someone in my country. I'm not going to reveal their name. So there's a stent kind of thing that you can put in human beings to give you an example of what I mean, right? So patents, you be vague. You be as vague as they'll let you get away with. So, there is a guy in my country, a doctor, who in his garage noticed a problem um, with people's throats, right? These throats close up because sucking dick all day is a real hard job. And it's pretty hard to get this shit open when there's like things lodged in there or whatever the fuck you need, and you need to go through the throat. So he came up with a spiral mechanism device where you've got a bunch of these threads that are all interlinked, right? And from one end, you can run a current through it. And what it does is all these untangle, expand outwards into a rigid structure, and keep whatever the fuck was blockaged off open. And these are all threads, right? These are all hardened threads. So this person can now breathe through this. In his patent, he made one mistake. He said when, when the structure is opened into a person, the optimal angle for these threads to unspiral into is an angle of like four degrees. Do you know why that was a mistake to put in his patent? And this is, he's a doctor who didn't understand how patents work. Because now, you can see his exact genius idea in hospitals being used at every single angle except four degrees. So when you write a patent, you be as vague as they will let you get away with being. So when you see this weird, wacky shit that Nintendo's doing, when you see that, that crazy taxi shit where it was just a car driving down a road, does this work for constipation? I'm pretty sure it would. Depends how far you shove it up, I suppose. But when you see the shit, that's why they're super vague with their patterns. They are as absolutely vague as possible so that they can cover as broad a spectrum as they can, even covering terms that they might not have thought of themselves so they can get away with screwing other people over. That's how that works over power world let's dive into that a little further so right now we don't actually know exactly and apparently pocket pair they don't know either exactly which patents nintendo are suing for they have said that there are multiple patents being infringed upon but haven't clarified exactly what ones now nintendo has quite a few pokemon related patents listed broadly speaking these things cover the following throwing a ball to capture weakened creatures and then throwing that ball again after capture the word they use is, quote, altering the state of the target, if I remember correctly.
or to release them under your control. Summoning and riding a creature you've captured via the aforementioned ball system, actively swapping mounts while riding them, <laughs> storing captured creatures inside of a ball and or a terminal-like system, and how about this one? Encouraging healthy sleeping habits by Tim- Oh man, Tim Tim is fucked. Ending two captured creatures in their game. I am not joking, they have a patent for encouraging healthy sleeping habits. Now Tamagotchi's fucked because it does the same thing. Now those are the dumbed down, simplified explanations of these patents. In fact is that every single one of these has very specific language with fine details on exactly how those systems are implemented. With minutia like exactly how is a ball thrown that captures a creature? How many shakes does the ball do in an attempt to capture said creature? The specific Ooh. method of riding and swapping your ca captured creatures. And what specific ways does the game promote healthy sleeping habits? So for example, in the patent that they- I've never met a video game that have promoted healthy sleeping habits. Not once in my life. Pokemon included. If I throw a brick at a puppy outside, Nintendo will sue me. Only if you capture that puppy inside the brick, and then later you take that puppy's corpse and throw it at the, the CEO of Nintendo so that they can see what you did. Just so you know, my Tamagotchi is still alive. Lucky you. Mine died. Mine died when I was a kid, when I was forced to go on a camp I didn't want to go on by my parents, and I left my Tamagotchi with my, um, uh, I, I left it in the house of my grandparents' house, thinking it was going to be safe, and when I came back, my um, step-grandmother, who had a gambling problem, had sold it off, along with my grandfather's car. She sold off his scorpion. Lost everything. They have, for quotes, the gamification of health awareness based on wake-up time. It reads like this. An object is to provide a user with motivation to enjoy waking up in the morning and guide the user to sufficient awakening by generating a breeding event in a breeding game of a virtual life form when the user wakes up in the morning. Based. <laughs> They want you to breed. Morning, and it goes on from there. But yes, broadly speaking, that list of things are some of the stuff that Nintendo has Pokemon patents for. They're just a few examples. They have many, many more patents pertinent specifically to Pokemon. Now, as of now, we just don't know which combinations of these patents Nintendo is claiming yes, have been Ashura. infringed. And as I mentioned, Pal World developer Pocket Pair, they don't know. Yes, Ashura, but my mother didn't do this out of malice. She thought I was just never going to use it again. She, did, she didn't understand the value of it. My, my step-grandmother was a gambling-addicted monster who would sell off anything and at some point attempted... No, I'm not going to tell that part. No, I'll leave that part out. That's, more, that's way too personal. I'll leave that alone either. According to them, they've not yet been told. They actually released an official statement via Twitter in regards to the suit and it says, Regarding the lawsuit, yesterday a lawsuit was filed against our company for patent infringement. We have received notice of this lawsuit and will begin the appropriate legal proceedings and investigations into the claims of patent infringement. At this moment, we are unaware of the specific patents we are accused of infringing upon and we have not yet been notified of such details. Pocket Pair is a small indie game company based in Tokyo. Our goal as a company has always been to create fun Oof. games we will continue Fuck. to pursue this goal Fuck! if they were based anywhere else they would probably be safer because we know that our games bring joy to millions of gamers around the world pow world was a surprise success this year both for gamers and for us we were blown away by the amazing response to the game and have been working hard to make it even better for our fans we will continue improving pow world and strive to create a game that our fans can be proud of it is truly unfortunate that we will be forced to allocate significant time and matters unrelated to game development due to this lawsuit however we will do our utmost for our fans and to ensure that indie game developers are not hindered or discouraged from pursuing their creative ideas we apologize to our fans as always thank you it goes on and that last bit is i think really the rub um it's just it's so, so frustrating on so many levels. In terms of this lawsuit and the potential outcome, right? Well, if they don't settle out of court, odds are Pocket Pair will be required to make adjustments to whatever systems or mechanics are found to infringe upon. I want them to turn every single Temtem -tem if they're forced to make adjustment. I mean, not Temtem, -tem, fucking Pell in this game into some business suit who looks like they came out of Nintendo 
and instead of th throwing balls at them, you're just throwing dicks at them, and you're not capturing them. You can't capture them. You can only just murder them with the dicks, like they deserve. And then there's just the final boss is just the Nintendo uh, main building, and <laughs> the only way to win is to firebomb it. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to do that shit. And Nintendo's patents. And then after that, they will probably also have to pay some sort of fee or fine to Nintendo. Either way, Nintendo is going to cost Pocket Pair a good chunk of money, whether that's just the cost of having to go through a lawsuit, even if they are found not guilty of infringement, or if they are found guilty of infringement, having to then pay Nintendo directly. The game is not gonna shut down. Well, I guess it could Yet. if Nintendo bleeds pocket pair dry enough of money. Hey, guess what they're trying to do? That they go out of business, in which case yeah, the game could probably shut down. And all of this in the name of some flippin' patents on game mechanics. Honestly- Yeah, so guess, guess what I was talking about earlier? Hey, remember when I was saying that the point of this for Nintendo is not to win? Because they, they know this is insane. The point is not to win. It's to kill the, the competitor using a legalese system as hard as possible. There is nothing that Nintendo loses by doing this lawsuit at all. Nothing. Either way, even if this is somehow thrown out, they got to waste a chunk of money of pocket pair that would have otherwise gone towards development. Guess what's not happening? this entire situation it's crap unless nintendo has like some proof that pocket pair stole and copy pasted source code from pokemon games to use in pal world if that's the case i totally understand but the idea that they're suing the devs because the games have similar mechanics like capturing monsters in a ball or incentivizing healthy sleeping habits like it's all garbage man patents over basic game mechanics and systems are dumb and they shouldn't be a thing as far as i'm concerned i am no legal expert I, this is completely out of my depth, but just the basis of it is so frustrating to me. And I also want to make it clear, I am in full support of companies protecting their brand and protecting their IP. If someone is straight ripping Pokemon code, changing the colors and slapping a new name on the game, that's one thing. But putting patents on ideas for systems and features, it's just bad. It sucks now. It's always sucked, especially yeah, when it comes to you. this point where we are seeing lawsuits. It is bad for game developers. And it's bad for us, the gamers. This stifles creativity. It prevents more games from not just having similar systems, but then improving on them, adding to them, and making better games as a result. You no, know, I keep on coming up. Like, every time I see Pal World, I can't help it. I keep coming up with more fucked up systems they can put in the game. Like, I want, there's like, a dynamic weather system they put into the game where it gets super cold, where if you don't have the right gear and shit, the only way for you to survive is to find your biggest Pal, like... Uh, de disembowel their shit, climb into the, like, the open hole and wait until the storm passes inside their slowly bleeding out corpse while you use their body for warmth. Pocket pair, I'm available for hire if you ever need. <laughs> if you ever need an idea guy, I've got some shit for you. <laughs> Results and Nintendo coming out and suing Pocket Pair. This is the kind of show of force that will likely prevent other developers from trying to make games that are similar in that monster capture genre. Indie devs, they don't want to risk getting sued by Nintendo. Like, are you kidding me? So the end result is many won't bother. They they won't try to make a game that innovates and expands upon Pokemon's shortcomings. They'll just do something else entirely. Now I do realize as well. There's still a lot we don't know, and there's definitely, without question, a lot of nuance here. Other monster capture games do in fact exist that Nintendo yes. hasn't sued for patent infringement, and we don't yep. know yet exactly what Nintendo is suing for. They haven't specified. We see their patents, we know they're suing because they think multiple patents have been infringed, they just haven't said what ones. So the patents that have been infringed upon, how they were infringed, exactly how closely are Power World mechanics similar to that of Pokemon's, all of that will... This wouldn't be as bad, or Pell World wouldn't fucking exist whatsoever, if Nintendo had already gone out of its way to attempt to sue a bunch of other companies with similar games. But it's very, very odd that Pell World's the uh, Pell World blows up, people love it, and then Nintendo gets mad. Every other game before that, with monster capture shit, that's fine though. This one. Nah. Nah. What a bad idea.
will come out during the uh, uh super god i think it's premium remember i got i paid like 200 bucks for premium and i'm gonna let it expire i'm never letting them touch my bank account again i wanted to see what it was like to live as the lowest life form ever with a check mark on my account it's not worth it it's really not worth it but maybe i'm wrong i don't know the the ins and outs of it i was doing it more for data set collection for my job and to see if that that um, check mark did anything it doesn't it's not worth it process of this lawsuit assuming it all goes public uh, even still though like the nintendo story specifics aside generally speaking i dislike this practice and what it does to gaming the warner bros patent on the nemesis system is the one that tilts me in particular i think a lot of my vigor in this video is like suppressed anger over that yep. the fact that more games don't have Every open world game should have a nemesis system and they would all be better because of it. It's a blanket statement, but you honestly, man, I, it just tilts me so much. It was so damn cool. And they've made pretty much zero use of it over this past decade, all because they have a patent. Uh -huh. They're not making other games and no one else can do it either. So I guess we'll just get to experience. Also, yeah, um, Super God, you could probably get away with running AIs locally. You can do it. It's not that hard to set up. There's like a million tutorials on night, online for getting it set up if you're lost. It's not hard. I've done it myself. The only reason I don't do it is because I need the processing power of my PCs for other parts of my job. But it's not that hard. It's really not that bad. Uh, okay, but here's the real question. I heard Japanese are siding with Pokemon. Do you think this lawsuit will go the way of the Asian parents and the old man Nintendo wins? It's possible, Lloyd. It's really possible that they actually do win because legalese cases inside of Japan are completely different to legalese cases outside of it. Because as far as I'm aware, their IP protections are completely different. And they always favor older companies over newer ones. And the Japanese legal system does not like losing. Right? So, like, if you are in Japan and something happens, even if you didn't do anything, if you're accused, you are more likely to be convicted. Because how could the law ever be wrong? Right? So, something happens in Japan, you were just in the same area, you're accused, you're put on trial, you are more likely to go to prison for something you didn't do than if you were somewhere else, like the US. Um, purely because their legal system is almost like your guilt is decided upon accusation. They're, if you look at their conviction rates and shit, that'll prove it to you very quickly. Um, their legalese systems around IPs and copyright and stuff are different from the rest of the world, which means Nintendo may very well actually win this, as insane as that sounds. There's a good chance of that. I hope they don't. I hope the, the judge that sees this is not some fucking boomer who's older than God himself, who, who was there to watch the birth of death at the beginning of the universe, and actually can apply some logic to the digital space, but who knows. Who knows? Experience games with Nemesis systems sometime after 2035. If I'm, if I'm still alive, looking forward to it. I just hate it so much, dude. I hate, I hate this so much, honestly. It, it, uh, it makes gaming worse. No, yes. thank you. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Yeah, good video. It was mostly a rant video. He's 100% right. There's no fucking reason to think that Nintendo won't do this again, that this won't happen in the future. This is just how it is now.